So, David, you uh, acknowledged that you and Steve Cohen flew to Japan, met with Yamamoto last week. When you do something like that, what are you hoping to accomplish with the meeting? I think for, for a meeting like that, whenever we're meeting with any free agent, um, we understand that, that they're going to have unique perspectives on an organization. What they're seeking um, is, is maybe different from other people and that this is a really big life decision for them. And so we want to provide any free agent the opportunity to make the most informed decision possible and make the best decision possible. Um, clearly, finances are going to play a part with that in that for any free agent. Um, but in a meeting like that, what you're really trying to convey is who we are as an organization, what we believe in, uh, why we're going to have success, and, and allow the player to really be part of that vision. And, uh, and so that's what you're trying to convey. With a player of that caliber who is that sought after, clearly he's going to make a lot of money no matter where he chooses to go. Uh, you said it yourself, he's likely going to meet with a number of teams, so it's no surprise that you guys did meet with him. But in your experience going to him, going to Japan, um, showing that kind of extra effort, human element, do you think that that in general makes a difference with players? I, th I think it likely demonstrates that we're serious mm -hmm. and, and certainly to have an owner get on a plane and, and fly to Japan for a, a meeting like that. I think is a real sign of, of Steve's commitment to do everything he possibly can to, to bring top targets to New York um, and to do everything he can to, to help us win. You said yesterday that over the years you think that international scouting has gotten better and projections about what players are going to do when they get to the major league level. Obviously the numbers in Japan speak for themselves, but what have you been able to see as you've gone kind of deeper on Yamamoto that makes you believe that he will be a top end of the rotation type starter here. I think his arsenal just speaks to the ability to get any type of hitter out. And um, not only just the quality of his pitches, but his ability to command them to all um, places in the zone. Um, he seems to have the ability to manipulate the ball the way he wants to. Uh, and it's exciting. You know, he, he, this is a 25-year-old um, pitcher who's very accomplished at a, at a high level, has pitched in big spots. Um, and that's why there are a lot of teams after him. Uh, depending on what happens with Yamamoto, do you have an appetite to add a top-tier starting pitcher no matter what, or is he the main target, and then should he choose to go somewhere else, you guys would pivot in a different direction? Yeah, I don't know that I'd ever say no matter what. I, I think um, our goal is to, to put together as competitive a team as we possibly can with the understanding that we're also building for long-term sustainable competitiveness. And so if there are other opportunities with starting pitchers that – align with those priorities, we're certainly going to look at them, investigate them, and pursue them. And to the extent that there are other opportunities that don't really align with those priorities, um, then we'll look at other segments of the market. Between your comments about Edwin Diaz's rehab and, and his own comments about expectations going into this year, uh, is it reasonable to expect that he can pick up right where he left off in 2022? Well, I, the 2022 Edwin Diaz years was a historic performance um, for a reliever. And so I think um, – Setting that as the standard, it, frankly, isn't fair. Um, but I think if we look at Edwin Diaz's overall contribution as, as a major league player and as a reliever, um, that's certainly what he and, and we would hope um, that he can shoot for and get back to. Finally, without talking specifically about Pete Alonso, I know you're, you're going to keep those conversations in-house. In general, as you think about philosophies regarding building an organization, how important is it for you to – have a, a core of, of homegrown players that ultimately take you through, um, or is that something that I guess just isn't as important as, as the general player that you can acquire in, in, uh, in totality? Well, I think I, I look at it as part of the entire stability equation. We, we do want to create an organization with stability where there's continuity, where there's consistency. Um, that's true in the front office. It's true with our manager and coaching staff. Um, and I do think over the long term, it's helpful for that to be true with a core of players. Um, and so that's something uh, that, that certainly we would seek. Um, and how that exactly shakes out and what that means for individual players will we'll take time to, um, to find out. But that, that certainly that stability, that consistency, that continuity within an organization, I do think that's important. David, thanks for the time these last few days. We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.